Introduction to AP Physics 1. The first thing we're going to do is uh, talk about how we explore relationships in physics. Um, what we are going to do is try to explain the natural phenomenon of our world and how we do that is we we take a look at how things affect one another. So in class today you're going to put a ball on a ramp and you're going to roll that ball down the ramp and see how far it travels uh, horizontally in projectile motion and then lands and hits the floor and what that distance may be. Um, and at that point what we're talking about is the relationship between the ramp height and the horizontal distance in which something travels. The, the importance of exploring this relationship is, is how we determine everything in physics. We have relationships uh, between how far we can throw a ball and how much uh, arm action somebody has. Or, you know, when we bounce a basketball, how, what its rebound height may be. Uh, and we can do that by finding several things. And, we, and what we do in physics is experiment. We take those relationships, things that we know occur, and then we go to the lab and, and, and experiment with those and, and change some things and control a variable and then see how it affects another variable. Uh, so the first thing you do uh, in exploring relationships is to understand that those happen between two objects and how they change. And we collect data. So you collect data. And, and how you do that is you have a procedure you follow. And during that procedure, you're wondering what you did, you know, what you're trying to measure, and then how you measured it. So it's important that your data table follows certain things. So here I have a sample data table, and then with sample data in that data table. Uh, in that data table, you can see that I have given each column a title and wrote units in each column. Uh, it's important that you do these things, and then you list them in order. Uh, you can have lines separating your, your numbers and your data so you like it a whole lot more clean, whatever the case may be, but it's important that each column has a title and then each column has units. Now these units that we have here are meters. Uh, we use the metric system in physics and we usually use the what we call the MKS system where we use meters, kilograms, and seconds. Uh, we use meters to measure distance and let me go back here. Sorry about that, went a little too quick. So we use meters to measure distance or displacement, uh, kilograms usually for mass, uh, how, how massive something is. A lot of people like to use the word weight. We're going to try to define the difference between mass and weight uh, very early in this class. And then seconds for time, and everything's in relation to time. So we use the MKS system. Uh, it's important to make sure we have data tables. They should look a lot like this. Um, and, you know, you follow a procedure to collect this data, and you're always wondering what, you, what you're trying to measure, how you measure it. And, uh, and, and you put it in a very organized data table. Uh, the second thing you do is, is graph your relationship. Uh, when we graph, we're graphing the relationship usually between two objects. So I'm going to write my data table here again. And what we're trying to do, uh, we want to quantify the relationship. We graph because it lets us see and quantify the relationship. Get that in there real quick. There we go. All right, so now we have that in there. Uh, we have two variables. We have the height in which we dropped it from a ramp, and we controlled this, uh, that particular variable, and then we wanted to see how it affected the distance in which that traveled. And that will be on the vertical axis. So now we label our graph, 
and we make it a very boring title. Very simple. Ramp height versus horizontal distance. Uh, it needs to be very simple in nature. You don't have to get all uh, have a lot of fluff with your particular title. It just needs to be very straightforward. We measured the ramp height and we compared it to horizontal distance. Uh, then you create a scale. And once you create a scale, you create that scale so it fits your, your data table. And you go ahead and make all that happen. Draw best fit line. And, uh, you know, the important things to have on a graph are a title, a good scale that fits your data. You plot your data points. You draw a best fit line. Um, you label each axis with labeled data points and units. Uh, those units are there for you. Um, it's important to put those on your axes, Y and X axis, that you have your a, a title or a labeled axis with data points. When you draw your best fit line, you're trying to make sure that it doesn't go through the, uh, I mean, it can go through origin, but you're not trying to force it through the origin. That's the important part, is you're not trying to force it. You want it to fit your data. Uh, if you're case you're wondering, I'm letting this video run right now because I know I made a mistake on my graph. and I'm going to come back here in a minute to completely correct it, so I'm just going to keep talking until we get to that point. Um, I have put the wrong variables on the wrong axis, and so hopefully we'll get there in just a second. There we are. Now I'm fixing it. So uh, talking about best fit lines. Best fit lines, uh, you want to have your data, uh, the same amount or equal amount of data points above your line as you do below your line. Uh, and you want your data to, your best fit line to fit your data. Uh, it's important that it fits it and you don't try to force things through the origin. Um, it's one of those things that is, it's something you get better at as you practice it. Um, but you don't want to force it through there. Um, so that's how we're going on that. So now that all that's done, okay, and, and even here I used a half intersection point and estimated a little bit what it was halfway between. Um, but the third thing you do is you find the slope of your graph, and that mathematically defines your relationship. So to calculate slope on our graphs, we pick two points on the line. They are not our data points. We will never, ever, ever use data points. Make sure we understand that. We will never use the data points from our data table. Just not going to do it. We'll use the slope formula. Uh, somewhere along the line in one of your classes before you got to AP Physics 1, you were able to count up and over, rise over run, and determine a slope. Um, that is not how we're going to do things because your scale can be different, and if you count up and over, you'll get 7 over 5, but that scale can mean it's 20 over 2, and, and we want to stay away from that. So we're going to use the slope formula where uh, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now that I have my graph uh, all fixed up and correct after I made a mistake of putting the wrong variables on the wrong axes, uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward. And we're going to do that math where we have 1.35 minus 0.45 over 0.65 uh, minus 0.20. And we get a relationship of point or a relationship of 2. What that means, our slope means something. Uh, what that means is whatever ramp height we placed the ball on the ramp, when we let it go and it rolls down the ramp and goes in projectile motion off the ramp and lands on the floor, that the distance, horizontal distance it travels is twice that of our ramp height. And that, and that gives us the relationship that it, you know, it, it's twice Whatever height we set the marble at or the ball at, the distance horizontally it travels will be twice that. And then what we do once we have uh, our relationship in the form of slope here, um, we use y equals mx plus b to write an equation to define the relationship. So using y equals mx plus b, uh, y stands for whatever's on the y-axis and x stands for whatever's on the x-axis. So on the y-axis we have horizontal distance which we're going to represent with d. All right, I messed this up again, so here I am. There we go. So uh, we represent that with D for horizontal distance. And then on the uh, x-axis, we have height. And we'll represent that with H. Uh, the slope is wrong here. I have it backwards. So we're going to go ahead and let this run for a little bit. And there it is. So now we have distance equals 2 times height plus 0.01. 0.01 is the y-intercept. It's the point where 
my best fit line. I recognized it didn't go perfectly through the origin, and it doesn't have to. I'm not trying to force it through there, so once I get my line and I realize it's really, really close to zero, but it's not zero, it's okay to estimate that y-intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and estimate that. I know it's on the positive side, not the negative side of the y-axis. Go ahead and put that in there. And then we recognize that we can use this new formula that has our variables that we are concerned with, which is distance and height. And now we have a written relationship where we can use this equation to predict future behavior. So if we had a height of 120 meters, we could then determine the distance that that ball would travel rolling down that ramp. Um, this, this equation allows us to predict future behavior, and that's what we do in physics. We observe something uh, in the real world. We want to test it in the lab. We come and do the experiment. We recognize the relationship, write an equation to do it, and then go from there. And then we can use that equation to help ourselves further in physics. Um, but this is video one for you guys. I know in today's lab that you did, your graph was not linear. I made this, this video and made up data so we could do something very simple with linear, uh, linear relationships. The graph you did in class today is a curve, and we taught how to take a curve and put it into a linear relationship. Um, so it's important that we, we recognize that this data was not the data you received in class. So uh, I hope you come to you know, your next lesson, your next class with me with more questions about how we're going to do this, and we'll continue to work on this.